I knew that the Antelope Audio Zen Go Synergy Core was special when I first got it, but now that I've dug into it, this thing is amazing. It goes beyond being just an audio interface, so stick around to near the end where I show you one of the coolest features and I'll test that out. Also, I'll give you what I think are the positives and negatives on this unit. And just so you know, Antelope Audio did send me this audio interface. They didn't pay me or tell me I had to say anything about it. They just asked me to check it out. So here I am checking it out. Now let's dig in to see what this thing is all about. So first off, you'll notice that this thing is really solid. It's got a metal housing. It's designed to be a premium audio interface that you can take on the go with you. And if you were to take this on the go with you, you wouldn't have any worries about it dropping and breaking or any other wear and tear that you might get from being on the road. Another thing that really stands out when you look at it is that it doesn't have too many controls. You have this one big knob here and then three buttons. Now they make it pretty easy to control your inputs and outputs with this setup. You see you have your gain button here, you can push it once to control input one, push it again, control input two, and this obviously turns it up or down. And then if you want to control headphones, you have the button there headphones or monitors or headphone two, because that's another thing you're going to notice on here. You have two headphone jacks, which is really nice and you can control the volume separately. And another thing you're going to notice is it has this big LED screen and that's going to show you the information like when you switch between input one and two, plus it's going to have your meters on there so you can see the levels that you're recording at and turn things up and down accordingly. Plus you'll see the levels of your headphones and your monitors depending on what you're changing. Now let's take a look at the back of the unit and you can see you have your two inputs and these are two microphone preamps but they can also be used as line inputs or instrument inputs and the mic preamps on this are really nice they can do up to 65 decibels of gain which is quite a bit for a small format audio interface and then over here you have a couple of options for connecting monitors you can connect them to the left and right trs inputs here or you also have RCA jacks on the back. And this gives you some options. You can connect your monitors here and maybe have this go to a mixer or something like that. Or maybe you have monitors that need RCA connections. Again, it just gives you options. So it's really nice to see that. You have some SPDIF connections so you can expand this if you really need to. And then over here, it's our power options. So this unit is bus powered. You just connect your USB cable here and then connect the other end to your computer. You can even connect the other end to a USB 3 port or something like that. It doesn't have to be USB-C. You can use the adapter so it can go USB-C to USB 3 if that's what you want to do. So why does it have this other USB-C port? Well, they've done something really cool here. You can use that if you're taking this on the go and maybe using it with an iPad or something like that. You can have this powered by an external source like a USB power pack or something like that. And then you can use this as your data connection. And if you are doing that, this can also charge your iPad. So you can have this connected to some external power source have this connected to your iPad, iPhone, or tablet, whatever you have it connected to, and it can charge it through this other one. So it's a really cool configuration for your power. Again, you don't need to use that second USB-C port. It's just something extra that they've added in there, and it's some real attention to detail for somebody who might be using this as a portable audio interface. And now one of the things that you can't see on the unit itself is that it has top of the line audio converters inside of it. So you can capture very high quality audio with this. It's a premium audio interface with premium sound, 24 bits up to 192 kilohertz. Also, what you can't see here are the included plugins that you get with it, and those are super cool. We're going to look at those in a bit. And you also get Bitwig Studio 16 track, which is a $99 DAW, so it's not a cheapy OEM DAW that's severely crippled. This is an excellent DAW to get you started with music making. It does have a 16 track limitation, but that's still quite a few tracks to make music with. So this is your control panel. It kind of looks like your typical mixer and it kind of is. You have your two inputs up here so you can switch them between high Z line or mic. And you can do that for both sides. You can turn on your 48 volt phantom power, do your phase invert. And if you click on this, you can see we have the controls here, phantom power on phase invert right there. We can turn those off. 
And then if you had the mic modeling, you can enable that down here. I don't have that installed, so I can't enable it. Now let's look at some of the sections of this. So you can see we have our preamp section, which is our input section up at the top here. Then we have this section here, which is our monitor and headphones one. And we could adjust the volumes of our monitors or headphones one in here. And if we clicked on this, it's headphones two, and we can adjust headphones two right there. But you'll also notice this AFX section, and this is where it gets really cool. And what AFX is, are the plugins that you can use directly with the audio interface. So they're powered by the audio interface. They don't take your CPU's power and you're recording through them, just like if you were to record through some analog gear. And these are really cool. So let's just have a look at that. If we click in this area here, it brings up our AFX window. And now we can load a new effect on there and you can see what we have available to us. We have some EQs, we have modulation, aura verb, and then you have vintage EQs and you can see you have a handful that are given to you with the audio interface, but there are options to upgrade to unlock even more. You have compressors in here and guitar amps and cabinets. So let's look at some of these amps that we have in here. We have your top 30. We can also change that to a dark face amp, whatever we want here. It pretty much covers all of your basic amps. You have some you have an orange amp in there. You have some high gain stuff in here as well. Really nice amps. And then to go with these amps, you get some cabinets. So let's have a look at those. You can see you have a bunch of different cabinets that you can choose from in here. So we'll click on one of those and then you can adjust things like the microphones. You can change the microphones. You have a few options in here for mics and you can change the positioning of them as well. And then over here, you can adjust the levels of each mic if you want to do that. And there's some filter options as well. And we can record directly into our DAW through these plugins. So you can't change the sound. Once you record through the plugins, you can't change the sound after like you would be able to through a typical guitar amp simulator. You have to keep that sound. And that's something I actually really like because... I know with guitar amp sims, you have all of those options and everything, and it's really cool, but sometimes you can start just playing with them too much and trying to find that perfect amp combo and that sort of thing. And then you might say, well, let's change it up. And you just start wasting a lot of time with this. You're recording your sound and it's done. Of course you can do some EQing and compression types of things afterwards, but you at least have that sound done and you can save these so it saves our guitar amp our cabinet and if we had any other effects in there it would save those and all the settings and we could load them up again so we can have a uniform sound across our album or tracks singles whatever we want we can always bring up those settings and have our guitar sound the way we want it and of course you could add other things in there too if you want so let's just test this out and we'll hear how the guitar sounds all right, so I have my guitar connected and we've got a Plexi loaded up with a vintage 4x12 guitar cabinet. Let's check out how this sounds. <laughs> so that's just one sound let's try out another one of these amps here we'll go with this modern and we'll change the cabinet to a modern 4x12 to go with it <laughs> All right, let's try something else in here. We'll go with the AC30 type one. Hear how that sounds. <laughs> All right, so you can see how cool this is. And we, of course, can add other things in here if we want. 
maybe we want to put like a vintage preamp in here. So we'll have this like we're recording the guitar amp through these mics that are going into this preamp. Let's check that out here if it makes a big difference. <laughs> Lots of cool options in here. And of course you could put things onto your mic preamp as well. If you were recording with your mic, you can add things like compressors, some great compressors in here, like a FET 76. You also have some other great compressors in here. And again, you can unlock more if you really want to. Lots of possibilities here with this, and you can even use these when mixing. So it's like you're mixing through external gear. You'll be mixing through your audio interfaces, external gear, kind of. Now the Antelope Audio Zengo Synergy Core is a premium audio interface, and it has a premium price of $550. So is it worth that? Well, let's check out some of the positives and negatives. Starting with the positives, and the first positive about this is probably the most important thing of any audio interface. It's the sound and recording quality. Because this has those premium converters in there, excellent mic preamps and all of that, this thing delivers on sound and recording. The next positive is the build quality. This thing is solid. So if you're taking it on the go with you, or if you're worried about breaking your audio interface, this thing is solid and it's really not going to break too easily. And another positive is the attention to detail. Things like those power options on the back or the dual headphone outputs. The attention to detail on this thing is incredible and definitely a positive. And of course, another positive is the effects that come with it. You can use them while recording so you can capture the perfect take, or you can use them in mixing and have something different that really not everybody else has. These effects are really nice. And now let's look at some negatives. And one of the biggest negatives for me is if I sit this back on my desk or kind of out of the way, it is a little bit of a pain to adjust the levels because I have to see which input I'm adjusting and that sort of thing. And of course, if I use that virtual mixer on the computer to adjust all that stuff, it's not really a big deal. The positives far outweigh the negatives. So is it worth the premium price tag? Well, that's for you to decide. Now check out this excellent portable MIDI controller to go with your audio interface by clicking the video on the screen. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Also subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. Thank you so much for watching for Audio Tech TV. I'm Zane, keep creating, and we'll talk soon.